اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم محمد ہو و نسلی علی رسول الکریم وی آر ڈسکسنگ آیت نمبر 282 آف سورہ البکر وی ہیڈ کورڈ اونلی پارٹ آف اٹ سم سیگمنٹس آئی ول اسٹارٹ فرام the the discussion where we left last time but before that i'll just uh, recapitulate a few points particularly from the questions which were raised and uh, alhamdulillah in this ayat i have seen that a very uh, um, great discussion is is taking place and the questions which are also being asked they are very crucial uh, for example there was a question about uh, uh evidence of rajalain and imra khan and then there were some related questions to the witnesses and other things i just recall those points before you but then i immediately uh, go to the uh, discussion where we had left it and now so far as the witnesses are concerned and uh, the terminology is concerned rajalain and imra khan i am before i go to answer these questions or discuss these questions which i propose to discuss in inshallah next time i am just making some uh, points just to invite your attention that next time when we inshallah discuss these should be in our mind here the word shahidain has been used not shahidin so the difference we have to keep in mind is between the difference between shahid and shaheed this is very important so far as the subject matter of this ayat is concerned that shahideen are not recommended shahidain are recommended not shahid but shaheed so we'll have to legally consider the difference between the shahid and the shaheed that determine that will also help us in understanding the evidence which is going to be taken from the rajlan and the imrata and then the construction that shahidain rajlan rajlan is accusative whereas imrata has been used not imrata why this difference instead of for saying uh, imrata there the form has been changed and it has a significance it has a bearing in the in the philosophy of what is going to be suggested and then dr salama had also raised a very crucial question regarding uh, the evidence of rajlan and then it comes to farajul wa imrata we have to keep that also in mind but i think particularly this point that is for rajulun wa imratan this segment inshallah i would uh, suggest to take up in a separate uh, discussion not in not uh, i mean maybe next time but after that one complete dedicated presentation just to explain the importance of wa here and this the the understanding of wa has affected the entire jurisprudence islamic jurisprudence fiqh on this ayat and the evidence of women therefore on the i propose to dedicate one full discussion on this so that question which was raised was very crucial that for rajulun and then uh, what about wa imratan so then i think we'll take up that also but inshallah in a separate uh, discourse in a separate discussion and then the whole concept what is being discussed here we have seen that the contracts which we conclude nowadays in modern days they provide for dispute resolution mechanism also in built dispute resolution mechanism but this ayat is not making us providing a separate clause for dispute resolution mechanism for mediation or something like that but in the total frame of this ayat this ayat is going 
even ahead of modernism it is going ahead of the modernity it is suggesting pre dispute resolution mechanism is not starting with the dispute that it is starting with the doubt that it requires a separate dedicated understanding and that is the last ayat uh, the last part of the ayat here that we'll discuss inshallah separately so i have just pointed out that these are important questions which have been raised and alhamdulillah a great quality of discussion is taking place so we will discuss uh, these in inshallah coming weeks or coming month um, now i come to the part of the discussion where we had left last time if you call we had left at this line zallat here it's a tashdeed it's a dalala but when it is the word root is also written there it means it is dalala zalla and then the i have selected there are many form words which emanate from this root but i have selected halal now zalalatan the meaning of uh, this word with its uh, different shades all around along with other derivatives has great explanation and i think that is very relevant to us and that will explain that uh, what this uh, ayat uh, when it says that uh, the if, if the uh, if, uh, if the two witnesses whether women or men two witnesses when any one of them is not available then what will happen in the case of rajlan a relaxation has been given from 2 to 1 but in the case of imrata a different kind of relaxation has been given that in the civil law a provision has been made for briefing that one will brief to the other it means the other can carry the brief of the first to the court to the judge to the jury so these are uh, i mean different points that we will consider uh, discuss when this point comes up that what is the difference of the relaxation which has been given in case of rajlan and what is the relaxation which has been given in the case of imrata but in both the cases this dal uh, applies anyone can be, may become not available as a witness as a witness therefore this provision pertains to both as witnesses not as gender the discussion from the first slide which i had uh, project today also just to recall start is shahidain the discussion is starting in this segment of ayat on shahidain on the set of two witnesses so the entire discussion is taking place on witnesses not on their gender the difference of the two relaxations which have been given one for the rajlan and the other for the imratan is only to the extent that the rajlan the the, the provision is different and for imratan the relaxation is different not in terms of gender but in terms of witnesses now after we discuss this dal uh, then next time inshallah we will discuss that difference of the uh, relaxations in these in this segment of the ayat if you recall i had said that uh, the uh, ayat in this segment says that if one is not available this is my interpretation when one is not available and this interpretation of availability or non availability i have taken after considering all these meanings which we are going to discuss from the root and from the word dalal or dalalata the basic meaning as uh, dr musanna had also explained the misguidance misleading and then um, uh, brother ravi uh, basa had also pointed out different uh, translations which have been given at the quran corpus.com all those together and the entire lexicology and lexicography 
in my opinion, the nearest in translation here is the non-availability. Now, absence is also one of the significant, significant uh, meaning of this uh, root, which emerges from this root, absence. A state of concealment. This is the primary significance, according to Biswa. MSP here is given in the uh, bracket. These, these are the names of the dictionaries. Then, in contrast, let us see what is the meaning of dalal. The contrast, dalal presents the contrast of hoda and rasha, rushd and hidayat. Dalal presents the contrast of the rushd and hidayat. It is not in any way synonymous to the nasa, forgetting. It is by interpretation, not by the, if, if, for example, uh, Nasa is not the uh, contrast of, uh, uh, Nasa is not the contrast of Rasha, and Nasa is not the contrast of Huda. Huda. But Rasha and Huda are uh, presented, are the contrast of uh, uh, Dalal. And Nasa is not the synonym at the same time. Nasa is not the synonym of Rushd or Hidayat. This is not the, uh, the synonym, nor is the contrast. Now, Nasa is not the direct significance, uh, signification of uh, uh, the word Zalal. And here in the brackets also you have seen, these are the uh, names of the dictionaries. For example, Tajal Urus and others, Kamus, these are the names I'm just pointing out. Now then, Dalalun, Ardulun, a lost state in which something has been lost, Zayad. Now, from Dal, it signifies Za or Halak. It signifies, as a synonym, it signifies Za or Halak. These words are not the contrast of Nasa. In the earlier ayat, I had shown, shown as the that Rashad and Huda are not the synonym of Nasa. And here, these words are not the contrast of Nasa. And Nasa is not the direct signification. Again, I'm repeating, Nasa is not the direct signification, direct meaning of the love. But how this translation has crept in, that it has been translated as Nasa. You will find in the dictionaries that uh, the explanation of the law has been given like this. M absence of memory, absence because of the first meaning, absence, because of the basic meaning of absence, it has been added to the memory that absence of memory, Zalla refers to the absence of memory, but at other places you find if anything is absent, even the camel is absent, anybody is absent, if one can, one, uh, they use the word dhalla. Because of the basic meaning of absence, which has been associated with memory, it was translated for the purposes of convenience as nasa. Otherwise, nasa is not the direct meaning it is by way of adding a nasa to, to the memory, explaining nasa with reference to the absence of memory. So it is the absence, absence from her memory, just not the nasa, but absence from the memory and memory of one of them can be absent. These are the translations which have been given. And because of the significance, the basic meaning of absence, attached with memory and translated in, uh, in one word as we are usually prone to translating in one word or in one liner it came to be used as a very simple and very convenient word as nasa and then i had also said that if she is not available because of any biological reasons particularly a woman if she is a woman witness 
and she is not available because of the biological reasons. Look at the modest expression expression in Arabic. If somebody says dalat ayam, if she says, or if, if any reference is, is made to her, then in very modest way in hijab, somebody is referring to her absence because of the biological reason that she is not available because of the biological reason because of the ayam she is not available and there word dalat dalat is used mughni in the bracket you have seen mughni none of the ancient class, classical uh, uh, lexicographers he has given this meaning signifies i forgot the thing because you have seen that absence has been attached with the memory and then not available same uh, uh, the significance because of these nuances at other places also in literature when somebody says dallani ya fula for about anybody dallani fula somebody says that uh, he went away from me uh, somebody went away from me and I, I'm unable to compass him I'm unable to find him it means he's not available she is not available the witness is not available that is why I have gone for this uh, interpretation then the witness may be legally lost evidence may be legally lost not available no more available rather no more available from this word same word if somebody something falls from him if you lose the evidentiary value of the evidence if the witness is lost it is discarded technically legally use the word that the evidence has been discarded or the witness has been discarded it means it is no more available no more worth it no more, no more available and even this word same word is used for if somebody loses a camel somebody loses something somebody loses a horse the same word is used it means there is no more available with me it's no more with me i can't compass i can't find it it's no more available my uh, camel is not available i can't find it it's no more there and there are uh, detailed explanations, but I am not into going, going into those. I mean, great uh, I mean, lengthy discussions. When witness is not available because its evidence is not worth it and it is discarded, then somebody can say that it has come to naught. It has passed away. We examined it, but we have rejected it. It has passed away. It has lost its utility. It's outdated. It's no more required. Then, in that case, when the witness becomes dalal, when the witness is not available legally, physically may be available, but legally not available, may be available in his home or in her home, but not available in the court. It's lost. It is not available because the witness is not available because it has lost its evidence the worth of its evidence dalal there can be many situations when the evidence may not be available or the witness may not be available and look at the wisdom of quran that using one word which covers all the practical difficulties and situations which the court faces in uh, uh, um, uh, recording the evidence from the witness maybe the witness is not biologically available not physically available not uh, maybe um, died maybe uh, missing because of any reason maybe mentally lost maybe the maybe the evidentiary value is lost her legal capacity or his legal capacity is lost this one word is presenting all those different situations which have been covered in one word and i've tried to bring it within nearest word that is unavailable 
then written is not available again because the evidence her or his evidence has lost uh, the significance another condition one in whom there is no good when the court finds that the witness is unbelievable not good in character can not be believed worthless morally and there is no good in the witness that he can tell the truth the witness is discarded and the same word but here this word is much more stronger in literature where it is used like this and so many dictionaries quoting and then witness not available again because of the worthless evidence misleading if he is misleading or she is misleading deliberately or otherwise same word covering all these situations confused perplexity mental situation mental condition inability to see the right course all these different situations where the witness is not available or rejected are covered in one word from the same one root dalal unacceptable legally the evidence has been annulled it has been lost state of work dalalatul amal this is the word this is the phrase which is used somebody's deeds are lost dal signifies he was uh, became confounded or perplexed here also the lexicographers have used this uh, this link with the nasa but it can happen to anybody for example uh, maybe somebody because of health reasons suffers from dementia but this is different from that before that somebody may get confounded perplexed the witness is gone no more acceptable to court dal is not a case of nasa then going away from right at the law as i said the, the root and then the word zalal i have chosen for explaining this with other meanings a minute from this missing from that which brings or conducts to the right to the object so the object of the court is to reach the truth but the witness is of such a nature that or uh, she is behaving or he is behaving in such a manner or uh, presenting the facts in such a manner that he cannot or she cannot bring us to the uh, the object which is being sought it cannot bring us to the truth then again the court will say that he is of the law he is the law he is lost he has gone away from the right course he is misguided according to rag deviation intentional or unintentional when the court finds that the witness is deliberately or um, uh, unintentionally deviating and this happens almost every day almost in every case and then that is the situation where the court feels that now this witness has gone at the law the law no more acceptable no more reliable and then dalalt or istri went istri i am going into these in this every situation which i am explaining it here is a different situation and all these different situations are covered in one word that's why i am referring to all this and this is a crucial ayat crucial of I the mean, part of the ayat where the evidence of women has been discarded by our fuqa without going into all these details somebody if loses the way to the mosque is i mean they use a word zalaltul masjid tariq on the course if there are many cases 
in which the the witness while were uh, uh, testifying on the way she or he loses the way not from the beginning there's nothing wrong with his or her character but we come to the point that uh, it has now or she or he has lost the way now, some ayat and translations as we have been given in quran how they have translated as to go astray misleading misleads misleaders lost error all these things which i have explained there and pointed out there when all these situations we take together it applies to both not to the woman and not because of the nasa being the direct meaning nasa has been taken from the translation and they from the interpretation and we have been translating from translation absence of memory translated or interpreted as nasa and we have been translating further in our uh, i mean uh, interpretations and in our fiqh that since he is uh, suffering from nasa her evidence is not acceptable equal to half and then that has applied that has been further applied to her inheritance and it has been applied to many other things the situation of the conditions of our inheritance is totally different and here it is totally different but here unfortunately we have been discussing gender where it is a relationship we are discussing gender where it is a question of witness we had already discussed this this part and briefing also we have discussed and we had uh, um, discussed this subjective and the conjunctive part but here i may only point out to one thing uh, i which i have already mentioned also fat to zakir the briefing has been allowed here in case of other i mean uh, aspects of legality laws for example crime criminal law there is not allowed but here it has been allowed and it here it has been allowed when we will discuss for, for rajunun particularly for rajunun wa imrata there we will again discuss this then comes wala ya ba shuhada is a madu that don't harm the witnesses is a madu when they are invited they should uh, they should they should not uh, uh, i mean hesitate they should not uh, be wary they should not avoid it wala ya ba shuhada is a madu when they are invited uh here i will only concentrate on one point that is uh, uh do they should not refuse wala ya ba shada if i can use the existing translation that they should not refuse wala ya ba shada is a madu when they are invited usually we translate this in the context of court only as if we are referring to subpoena that whenever they are summoned by the judge by the court they should not refuse wala ya they should come they should come for the evidence but does it really mean subpoena only or the summon only calling a witness and recalling a witness these are different phenomena these are different uh, processes what is the meaning of do there is a great philosophy in this uh, word here which quran is presenting not the word do used in sayat it is not just subpoena in the legal terms but it refers to the special arrangement as an invitation dawa it is a special arrangement for invitation quran is using its own vision not subpoena it can it will be called subpoena when it is called it comes from the court but quran is making a provision even before that as i said it's a pre dispute resolution 
It is not a dispute resolution only. It is not a court trial. It is a pre-dispute resolution arrangement inbuilt. Whenever they are invited, so what is the purpose behind this? That they will be invited, the witnesses will be invited. Hatto zakir to recall. A new provision, a new concept Quran is presenting, which we have missed altogether. We have not institutionalized it because we make a mistake even before that at the time of appointment of the witnesses. Turn down. We simply think that we have to agree. It is satisfactory witnesses who can ultimately act before the court, even before the jury, as a pre-jury for you, for the pre-dispute resolution. They can gather, they can come together, and here the concept is Shwada Lilla. They are sitting, they are coming to the invitation Lilla, not for any party. They go again into the case, they refer to the case, Fatu Zakir, they look into it, and as a pre-trial, before trial and pre-dispute resolution, they are sitting together lilla, not as the witnesses for the prosecution or for the defense, to resolve the doubt. That comes at the end. It's a whole concept, it's a whole philosophy. The ayat is not suggesting any express provision for dispute resolution, but as an arbitrator, hakam or adl, here the responsibility has been placed even before that. In this ayat, Quran is not referring to any judge or court as hakam or for adl. Adl, the responsibility of adl has been placed on the shoulders of the katib. That you have to write with adl. The ayat says this. And the ayat further says, it has been placed on the uh, shoulders of the Yumlil, who is giving dictation, Bil Adl. This is, a, is totally a different concept, most modern concept, which comes before dispute resolution. Kindly look into the difference. The difference is that here the witnesses have to come as a pre jury and they have to deliberate Fatu Zakr. And for that, the Adl, the document which has been provided, it is on the basis of Adl, Kateb and Jumlil, the one who has written it, he has written it, anybody who has written it, they have to come commit the, they have to do it with Adl. Here the Adl is on the shoulders of the Kateb and the one who dictates. And then the deliberation, the briefing, is on the shoulders of the uh, Shahidayan who sit together. For example, when I went to the Supreme Court of uh, Qatar, I found that the jury, that, that the judges were examining the documents. And as they explained, that was our verbal, I, I haven't seen those documents, that the witnesses are also are, uh, are men, uh, they are so brief. They are sitting before the before the uh, court, which is considered very essential for inbuilt dispute resolution mechanism in any modern contract. This is pre-dispute. This is the, the the effort which does not allow any doubt, which clears the doubts. The Quran has its own vision. The Quran is emphasizing elimination of in any point leading to doubt. The very cause of dispute which arises as the experience also shows, the very cause of dispute and then if, the, if any doubt arises, the Quran is providing for its inbuilt mechanism for resolution of doubt by the witnesses themselves. They are lilla, they are not for anybody. This is a system. We are not following the system. We have not established the institutions. 
like an arrangement in place of jury or judge before jury or judge the witnesses are sitting there if the doubt is not resolved there and he still it persists then they go to the court then they go to the judge litigiosity is one of the greatest evils from which we are suffering today as dr mamdu salama said we are suffering from religiosity we are equally this is suffering from litigiosity go to any court to, to any country of ours you will find that almost every family is involved in one or the other way in litigiosity these are the two major elements religiosity and the litigiosity these are our two major elements wasting our time dispute resolution refers to extra judicial processes used to resolve conflict dispute or claim between parties but it goes in sequence doubt claim dispute conflict and conflict is the state of is the stage for fasad that is why quran calls it fisk that you will be committing fusu my you will if you disobey and we have disobeyed unfortunately allah may forgive us because of this disobedience that we have not established the institution this manner we are suffering dispute resolution processes are alternative to court judge or jury to resolve case of contract this is the spirit of dispute resolution mediation is a different thing witnesses are not mediating witnesses are for lilla mediator is only facilitator he facilitates the discussion the decision the resolution he facilitates the resolution he does not dictate it he does not provide it he is only a facilitator and these witnesses according to this ayat the system which this ayat is proposing is a system of alternate dispute resolution pre dispute resolution and they are not sitting as arbitrators quran here is not providing in this ayat but those are different ayat here hakam is not appointed is not referred to here adl and hakam is placed on the shoulders of those who are dictating who are documenting at this stage i may uh, mention something more that our economies in our countries are suffering because these are undocumented this ayat is not referring only to the documentation of personal contract contract between parties for the sake of convenience we have given the name contract is not the exact translation since it's not it's not only the question of personal documentation of a contract between two parties it is the overall overall purpose of documentation of the economy in our countries the tax base is very limited because our economy is not documented we have no documented statistics we have no documented data since it's not documented we cannot create any computerization which is reliable and we cannot have a, a real time online system because data is not uh, capturable you can capture data only when it is documented and here this ayat is asking us to document document everything and there is one more misconception about this ayat we are discussing only the contracting but what about the other two main major things which are uh, discussed in sayer the retail the retail has been discussed here tijaratan haziratan tudirunha bainakum retail one of the aspects and then wholesale tabayatum important aspect and then this contracting in which we are creating liabilities which has a debit and credit credit based system documentation of for the import and major in fact covering all other aspects 
segments of the uh, economy are mentioned or discussed in the sarat and then but one place we have interpreted for part of it that you may not uh, uh, document the retail we will discuss that when we come to that part we will discuss that also this ayat is basically specifying prescribing ordering ordering for the documentation of the economy be it at the personal level at all levels in all segments we will discuss inshallah that also that here is not referring to arbitration it is the main problem main main uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, burden is on now on the witnesses lilla they will come to resolve the doubt so that there is no dispute and if they resolve the doubt there is no dispute if there is no dispute there is no claim if there is no claim there is no conflict there is no fasa and then in that case there is no fas there is no violation of the uh, orders of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is the jury i have just given this in order to contrast that we are confusing with that that these witnesses will clear the doubt pre dispute resolution mechanism in the inbuilt mechanism the quran is placing responsibility for elimination of any doubt which creates dispute ultimately on these things we have already discussed and i'm just summarizing here third party validation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking with the that you you write and then using ya that they should write that is third party third party validation scribe scribe third party validation scribe will also be a, a third party one who dictates third party yumlin third party and witnesses third party maybe they are with interested witnesses no problem but they have to be witnesses third party it's not the person who is the party in the in the proper in the contract to complete the closing process for example this is just for example not the exact translation just for the closing process as we are doing here closing process for preparation and preservation of documentation with utmost care in order to have the documented economy at the apex if every transaction is documented everywhere then that gives you on the whole a documented economy this is a question of economy ultimately why it is happening like this why we have gone away from this why don't we understand this we are mentally slave and we have given our sales to slavery mental slavery i'm pointing out to one thing which is very crucial that how we are mental slaves there is a striking gap in the narrative of history of philosophy you take any book on philosophy first time i was surprised when it was my subject political science was my subject in my css examination there are two parts one is the philosophy of political science and then the other is the comparison of constitutions of the world in the philosophy of political science i found that the discussion starts from the ancient period the greeks are included the latin period is included the roman period included the modern period is included and the torch passes from person to person from philosopher to philosopher from scientist to scientist and in between there is no reference to any muslim civilization any scholar any scientist you read any book on philosophy and we are not even in fact starting our discussion of any subject in our madrasa on philosophy with philosophy mathematics is philosophy there is a striking gap in this history not only philosophy but development of science we have separate narratives 
for our own mental satisfaction. Ibn Sina did this, Ar Razi did this. But when we read the, the development, history of development of science, we don't find that how the torch has passed from one time scientist to the other. I'm talking about the narrative in the history. There's no such thing. We, in the history, we find that the torch passed from Galileo, Copernicus to Newton, from Newton to Einstein. There's no such a sequence in the narrative which shows that this torch passed through the Muslim civilization from this person to this person to this person to this person with this philosophy, with, with this theory, with this theory. You read any philosophy, any development of science, book on it, development science. And accent and descent of civilizations. It doesn't take place in a day. It's a process. One civilization goes up and one goes down. There's a friction. It's not an easy job. But in that friction, they give and take. That is not documented. We have not written it. We have not narrated it. We have isolated accounts of some scholars or something, some theories. For example, in the study of philosophy, one finds philosopher by philosopher. The torch passing from ancient to the modern. When we read such narrative, mentally we became slave. That everything starts with, uh, for example, Greek philosophy. We came to the such and such period of uh, Latin period and Buddhism and uh, Roman period to the modern period to the European period. Similarly, in science, one goes from theory to theory and scientist to scientist. I've given the example. From these accounts, historical Muslim scholarship and the research is all together missing. These theories of the economic theory is given in Quran, a model is given, and we have not institutionalized it. So why should they mention it? Because we, the torch has not passed this way. In my book, the Divine Dynamics, I've written there when Renaissance was taking place, when the movements for Renaissance were taking place, what were we doing? Why the torch did not go from that, for the modernity didn't go from Damascus, from Baghdad, from Cairo, to be specific from any particular university, from Al Azhar. The torch has not passed this way. Accent and descent of civilizations does not happen in a day. They rise and fall in contiguous struggle. Civilizations rise and fall in accordance with the Sunnah Allah, the laws of nature. Since we are Muslims, we think that we'll go to Jannat and then laws of nature do not apply and we will not lose our civilization here. We will not lose our power here. We have already lost it. Not only power, but lost the respect. La tabdeel ala sunnat Allah. This applies to all, not only Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling those who destroyed the masjid. And Quran is using the word masjid. You read it again. And for those people who destroyed that masjid, the first masjid, the first masjid, the second masjid, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using the word for those people as Ibad Lana, my obedient servants. Who were those obedient servants who destroyed the mosque? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning in Quran. First, they were the uh, worshippers of fire, fire, Persians. The next, they were Romans, pagans. And then Quran says that my Ibad, Ibad Lana, they destroyed the masjid. The first and the second. And we don't have the courage to translate that masjid as masjid, keep it as masjid. We have translated it as temple. That the first temple and the second temple was destroyed by so on, by the people. Ibad Lana, masjid, sunnatullah, la tabdeel ala sunnatullah. We have become slaves mentally 
and we have forgotten to find the institutional solutions in the, in the book. We have not institutionally, first we have to find the solution and then we have to institutionalize it. Modern literature in the acrimonious political perspective of the time, we had acrimonial history. 700 years struggle of Spain against Muslim rule. In that acrimonious political perspective of time breaks that chain. The chain is broken. Then why should they mention this torch passing from Ibn Sina to some, someone, from Ar Razi to someone? The chain has been broken, and we are happy with that. We we simply present, make presentation. Even I make the presentation, isolated presentation for some Muslims. They did this. That's all. But how the torch has passed on, and also our sales are we are ignorant ourselves. If they have not mentioned matrimony but we are ignorant also to find and demonstrate those missing links now we can find that missing link when we take the torch where it was left and then link now where the torch has reached but we are not ready to read that philosophy we are not ready to allow that philosophy to be read in our mother source we are not ready to allow the science to be studied we can link ourselves also only when we know where the other end of the thread is, where it is broken, and after that breakage, where the lead has, uh, where the thread has uh, taken the lead. We are not ready to understand and study that. That is why we are not reading this ayat, studying this ayat as the economy ayat for the creation of documented economy and different aspects of it. Instead of study and research in natural history, now I'm talking about the bigger perspective, history of philosophy, development of science, and rise and fall of civilizations. We are deeply entangled, as very rightly pointed out by Dr. Mandu Sulama in the religiosity. That is not religion. I think I have taken about one hour. I stop here because this will, I have on this subject, I have 260 slides. So I'll not be able to com complete this anyway. So I think I stop here and we'll take up inshallah. The next time, Allah willing, Allah willing, inshallah. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt wa afina fi man afayt wa tawlana fi man tawlayt. وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليك اللهم ادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين اللهم خرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهم إلى نور العلم اللهم علمنا ما نفعنا ونفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم تعلم من يستمعون القول فاتبعون أحسنا اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم بفضلك ورحمتك على كلمة الحق والدين اللهم منصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين يا أكرم الأكرمين Oh Allah, spread your mercy upon us Shower us with your blessings Increase our knowledge, grant us forgiveness And reward us with the company of the prophets in the Firdaus al-A'la Oh Allah, purify our heart, strengthen our faith Increase our knowledge and make us benefit from what you have taught us O oh Allah, forgive our parents and all the believers. Grant them your mercy. Make their graves garden from heaven. And grant them the Firdaus al-A'la. O oh, Allah, have friends and relatives who have passed away. O oh, Allah, forgive and have mercy upon them. O oh, Allah, pardon them and make honorable their reception. Surely you are of the forgiven, the most important. O oh, Allah, remedy our sick and grant them full and speedy recovery. O oh, Grant our son Maharaj and all our sick relatives and friends speedy and for recovery. O oh Allah, you alone is the ultimate cure. There is no cures but yours. O oh Allah, grant them a cure that leaves nothing of injury or ailment. O oh Allah, guide our children, protect them, and make them right. O oh Allah, we seek from you all of the good, whether we know it or we don't. And we seek your refuge. 
from all evil, whether we know it or we don't. Oh Allah, we ask you if you have elected for yourself that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved, his worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, his weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqi wa rida nafsi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqi wa rida nafsi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqi wa rida nafsi wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. Wal asr, inna al-insana lafi khusr, illa al-lazina amanu wa amilu al-salihat, wa tawasab bil-haq wa tawasab bil-sabr. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته